Hi everyone! So today's video is a little bit different. It's not on IBD as it usually would be and some of the viewers might be different than the people who usually follow me because many of my followers are, you know, they have inflammatory bowel disease or something similar to that. Today's video though is on a different disease. I don't have it myself but I thought I would call in a friend of mine to talk about the disease and it's called endometriosis. Now I don't want to give wrong information, but I learned about it in path a little bit. Um, I didn't know too much about it, but I knew that endometrium was the tissue that lines the um, uterus, and basically um, endometriosis is when that tissue grows outside of the uterus, so um, it actually will function like normal uterus tissue will. Um, it'll, as you get your period, it'll bleed there too. Um, I'm pretty sure. Now don't quote me on this. Like I don't have it myself so um, but that's why we have Brandy here today to talk about it so we can learn about it and raise awareness for the disease because from her story that she's going to tell it sounds like a very rough journey to go through. A rough like battle. Um, I just she is very inspiring and I was tearing up watching her video um, but anyway, I really hope you guys enjoy this and spread the word about endometriosis because there are a lot of women out there who have it. Um, Brandy will talk about that too. So enjoy the video, guys. Hey, everyone. My name is Brandy. And first off, I wanted to say thank you to Maggie um, for inviting me to come to her channel, Let's Talk IBD, to help spread awareness on one of my diseases that I have. Um, so I'm just going to spend a little time uh, telling you about it and what it means for me and a lot of other young women who have it and uh, so we're just going to get started. Um, like I said, my name is Brandy. I'm 28 years old and I live in Michigan. The disease that I want to talk to you guys about today is called endometriosis. Uh, currently I want to say it's like 176 million women worldwide have been diagnosed with this disease. And to put it into terms that is just easy for everybody to understand, endometriosis is where the tissues that normally line a woman's uterus implant elsewhere. The majority of the time it's in the abdominal cavity or the pelvic cavity, which would be um, common places would be the outside of the uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, um, uterosacral sacral ligaments. It can go to other organs such as the bladder, um, the bowels, there have been cases of it in, in the lungs, um, on sciatic nerves. It can basically go wherever it wants to go. It doesn't really care. <laughs> it just goes where it wants to go. I was diagnosed with endometriosis in 2010, um, April 2010. I probably have had symptoms of it for as long as I can remember. Um, after I started my first period, which was age 11. Um, the symptoms didn't get terrible until I was in my um, low 20s. I did not really think anything of it when I was growing up. I thought it was normal to have the type of periods I was having. Uh, they were very heavy. They were very close to one another. Like, I didn't have the normal 28-day cycle that you hear a lot of women talking about. Sorry, my phone was going off. Um, Mine were like every two to three weeks, um, so I didn't have a lot of time off in between monthly cycles, <laughs> which was very annoying. They were very heavy, very painful, but at the time I didn't realize that that wasn't normal for um, a young girl to be going through. So, I'm going to say I was about 24, 25 when I finally just had enough and I went to the gynecologist and I said, look, I'm having all this pain and I can't figure out why. Um, so she just had me answer some questions. That was my dog. Sorry. <laughs> um, she had me answer some questions and she said that it sounds like I might have endometriosis. Um, symptoms of Callie. Anyone want a dog? <laughs> symptoms of endometriosis um, for the majority of women is abnormal periods, very heavy periods, irregular periods, um, painful periods, 
pain in between periods, um, pain when using the bathroom, uh, pain during intercourse, um, a lot of pain, if <laughs> you couldn't tell, a lot of pain. Anyways, the only way to truly diagnose whether someone has endometriosis or not is to do a laparoscopic surgical procedure where they go in um, through two to three, sometimes more, holes in your abdomen and they take a look around and I had my first lap in 2010 of April where I was diagnosed with stage one endometriosis. There's four stages, one being the least severe and four being the most severe. Um, so I had my first lap in April 2010 and she staged it at level one because she didn't see a lot of it. Uh, she only found it behind my cervix. Um, now, they stage it that way. Um, they find a lot. The stage goes further. If it's deeper, it goes further. Uh, but a woman can have stage 4 endometriosis and have no pain at all, where a woman with stage 1 can have all kinds of pain. It's just, it depends on the person. It's not a, you know, case where it's the same for everybody. It's definitely a case by case per, um, with each person who has it. So I had my first surgery and after that she wanted me to go on Lupron, which is actually a chemotherapy type shot for men that have prostate cancer. But they have found that it helps women with endometriosis with the pain. At that time I wasn't ready to go on Lupron because I had heard a lot of horror stories about it about women having very bad side effects and it, it just scared me. So at that time I chose to just do continuous birth control back to back. I did that for probably say about eight months before I really had any significant pain again and that's when I started going to a newer doctor um, closer to where I was and um, she started me with pain management. Basically, she would give me about uh, 20 Vicodin every month for the pain because at that time it was going in cycles with my period. Um, I was trying to skip periods with the continuous birth control, but it just wasn't working for me for some reason. And we still have not figured out why that doesn't really work that well for me. Uh, I guess my body just doesn't respond very well to hormones. But, um, we, after a couple months of that, we decided to go ahead and book another lap, another laparoscopic surgery to see where I was at. And <laughs> about a week before my surgery, I found out I was pregnant, which a lot of people think if you have endometriosis, you can't get pregnant. You'll never get pregnant. You can't carry a baby. That's not true. Only about 30% of people who have endo um, are infertile. I apparently am not. <laughs> um, I did get pregnant and of course that halted the surgery. But about a week after I found out I was having a lot of pain on my right side. Um, my whole uh, pelvis felt like it was stretching and cramping really bad. I was also bleeding. Um, to me it looked like the same bleeding I experienced every month with my endo. Callie, stop. And to me it it honestly didn't feel any different than what my endo makes me feel like. But I knew that wasn't right, that you're not supposed to be having pain and bleeding when you're pregnant. So um, I went to the doctor and she had me go to the radiology department because her office is actually in a hospital and so I had to go down there and they did a transvag ultrasound and before I even got back to um, the room that I was in originally at her office I was met by my doctor and her nurse in the hallway <laughs> with a wheelchair saying we have to wheel you to emergency surgery uh, because I was having an ectopic pregnancy. So that was my second surgery was April 2011 and that was to remove the ectopic pregnancy in my right fallopian tube. Uh, she could not 
search or remove any endo tissue during that surgery because my entire pelvis was completely covered in blood because the tube had burst open. So at that point it was pretty much a life or death situation I found out afterwards that I was pretty close to not making it if I would have waited to come to the doctor. So after that it took me about I want to say a month and a half to really heal properly from that surgery. Um, went back on to continuous birth control and I ended up moving to St. Louis because at the time of at the time of all this was going on I was living in Missouri and I moved up to St. Louis and I scheduled an appointment at the Washington University Reproductive Center for Endocrinology and I met with a endo specialist there who looked at my records and said I don't think it's endometriosis but we're going to start you on continuous birth control which I was already on continuous birth control and it wasn't working for me so that was kind of a bummer <laughs> because I felt like I just wasn't being listened to. So I booked an appointment with another gynecologist there who said that, oh, it's just your muscles, your pelvic muscles are just tight, you need muscle relaxers, that's it. I, d I never can understand to this day why those two doctors brushed me off when I had a chart that clearly showed what I'd been going through. but. Anyway, third time's the charm, I guess, because <laughs> I booked an appointment with Dr. Allering in St. Louis. Um, he listened to everything I had to say, looked at all my records, and he um, did a, I'm not sure of the name of the procedure it was, but it's where they um, inject a saline catheter into your uterus and it kind of blows it up, makes it easier to look at, and discovered I had two uterine polyps. So he booked me for another lap and also a hysteroscopy, which is where they would take the uterine polyps off my uterus. So I went into that surgery in April of, no, I'm sorry, February of 2012. By the time February 2012 had come, my endo had escalated to stage three. He said if there would have been a stage three and a half he would have put me there <laughs> but I wasn't quite severe enough to be at stage four but I had moved to stage three um, so he found the endo on my cervix my uh, uteral sacro sacral ligaments and my pelvic walls behind my uterus I'm kind of a weird case because I've never had the endo on my ovaries or my fallopian tubes. We're not sure why I had the ectopic because my tubes were clear and they weren't blocked and they didn't have any scar tissue on them so we're still to this day not really sure why I had that. But um, all of my endo tissue is basically on those ligaments that hold my uterus up. I know, like I said, I do have it on my cervix and behind on the pelvic walls, but the majority of the concentration is on those ligaments, and I found out that is why I have so much back pain, because that's where your ligaments are located. Um, I also have endo on my bladder, and I also have it on my bowels. That causes a lot of pain <laughs> when you're using the restroom, TMI, I know, but... It's, it causes a lot of constipation or a lot of um, diarrhea. There's no in between. <laughs> and it causes a lot of bladder pain. Um, endo is a very little tricky disease. She carries a lot of evil little twin sisters with her. Um, one of the, and I have them all, <laughs> one of her twin sisters is a disease called interstitial cystitis which is a bladder disease. It's also known as painful bladder syndrome and basically it makes you feel like you have a UTI all the time. It's terrible. You can't eat or drink anything that's caffeine, citric, um, very acidic. Anything like that will cause you to go into a pain flare where you feel like you have to use the restroom all the time and it is so painful. It feels like your bladder just burns. 
Um, some people have what they call hunter's ulcers, which are these little, basically just little ulcers on your bladder wall. Um, if you don't have those ulcers, you generally tend to have pinpoint bleeding all over your bladder wall. So you can imagine that's kind of fun. <laughs> Not. Um, I also have pelvic floor dysfunction, which is where your pelvic muscles tighten up and spasm and cause a lot of pain. Um, you can do pelvic floor physical therapy for that. I have not been able to do that because I don't live in an area where they offer that. Um, you can also try muscle relaxers and stuff like that, which work, but they make you sleepy and it's hard to function on them, so I just don't like to take them. I also have another autoimmune disease called fibromyalgia, which a lot of you probably know what that is, where your muscles ache, you're very chronically fatigued all the time. And they say that all these diseases are interlinked when you have one autoimmune disorder. You tend to have a lot more. And I definitely fit into that category with having fibromyalgia, endometriosis, interstitial cystitis, Pelvic floor dysfunction is not really an autoimmune disease, but it's related to having endometriosis. Uh, I also have problems with my stomach, which they say can be autoimmune as well. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, you can hit me up here on Maggie's channel at Let's Talk IBD, or you can shoot me a message on my blog at thisendolife.com. Or you can hit me up on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash thisendolife. I hope I could spread a little bit of awareness for you, a little information about endo. You probably know somebody who has it and you just don't know it. Um, but my biggest thing to tell you guys is we are chronically ill. We don't want to be chronically ill, but we are, and it's just a situation that we have to deal with. And we would just appreciate it if you guys would not knock us for it. Because I have had friends in my past who think I'm making it up or that I'm over-dramatizing it. And that's not the case. We don't want you to feel sorry for us. We just want to have a little understanding. Alright guys, thank you very much. Thank you to Maggie for letting me be on your channel and I hope I could raise awareness for you guys. Bye! Alright everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video on endometriosis, whether or not you have it or if you know somebody with it. Thank you so much to Brandy for making this video with all the stuff she has going on and she's willing to make this video, it's just so great um, and that she can just create all this awareness. So if any of you have a disease that you would like to talk about and um, create a video with me on, Email me at letstalkibd at yahoo.com and we can figure something out. We can work on it and see what we can come up with. But thank you for watching and thank you again, Brandy. I really appreciate this video. Alright, bye guys.